Folks, I think it goes without saying that most people out there enjoy some form of pizza, and if you don't, that's fine, but I think I speak for the vast majority when I say that people do. Pizza is one of those foods that can be enjoyed in a variety of different shapes and forms, and one particular form that is more popular in some areas than some is the dessert pizza. Dessert pizzas themselves can come in a variety of different forms. You, you could use a cookie as the base. Some people do regular pizza dough and then add like whipped cream and fruit and stuff on top of it. There's many different ways to make a dessert pizza. Even with a dessert pizza, though, usually the only aspect of a normal pizza that's kept intact is sometimes the dough. I mean, maybe sure, you'll put a little bit of cheese on it, depending on like, you know, if it's an apple and brie kind of thing or something like that. But regardless, usually the dough is the only ingredient consistent with the main dish. Now, think about the cousin of the pizza, that being the calzone. It's got primarily the same ingredients, just a different form factor. So it's not inconceivable to think that you could come up with an idea for a dessert calzone. In fact, I'm sure that there are already plenty being sold out in the world. Yet there is only one person I can think of. One, one man who is either brave enough or stupid enough to create a dessert calzone while also using normal calzone and pizza ingredients. Yes, folks, today we are taking a look at another one of our favorite King Cobra's creations, that being the candy calzone, with ingredients including the likes of pepperoni and cheese and candy. So I don't want to dwell on this any further, because if I stop to think about it for even more than a second, my brain is going to short circuit itself and I will stop the recording right here. So let's just get right into it with King Cobra's Candy Calzone. Before we begin, as always, make sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. We're trying to reach 5,000 subs as our next sub goal, and we're seeing how quick we can reach that next milestone. Thanks for all your support. What is up, fellow YouTubers? It's your sexy goth bad boy coming back at you with another cooking video. So I want to show you cool Cobras how to make a candy calzone. Hopefully it plays out. Cobra begins most of his cooking videos with some form of the phrase, I hope it plays out. Meaning that ahead of time, he has no idea what he's actually going to do. He just has the general idea. So even when we, you know, nag on K for not following a recipe to the T, at least she's following the general premise of a recipe, whereas Cobra is just making this sh up off the top of his head with whatever ingredients he has in his cabinet that he pulled out that day. Let's get to cooking that bacon for our recipe. Huh, a candy calzone, what madness is this? We'll start off with two slices of thick cut bacon from Oscar Mayer. We got the oven preheated. I don't know if he chose 420 because of the haha -ha weed number or 420 because he thinks that's the optimal pizza cooking temperature. Usually with domestic ovens, since you can't get it to the same internal temperature as a pizza oven, I've learned that you want to try and get it to as high of a temperature as it will go, as then it will closer replicate the internal temp of a pizza oven. That may not go for all domestic ovens though, that's just what I've heard. Some of you may think, oh, that looks nasty. I'd never eat that. Some of you may think, you know what? I'll give it a try. Really, it depends on your personal opinion. What? The bacon looks nasty? I mean, if you don't eat pork, I suppose you could say that. But uh, I'm, uh, maybe he's talking about the overall composition of what his stovetop looks like. Because, yes, that's nasty. The bacon itself is just bacon. Look at that bacon cook. It's not sexy. I take it back. Now the bacon looks nasty because you can see just the charred remnants of whatever food he cooked before is starting to latch onto the bacon. That's what happens when you don't clean your pan. I might have drinking just a little bit of vodka and monster before making this cooking video, but that's all right. I'm 27. 
we've seen Cobra eat a lot of trash so far, and we've only done what, like two or three videos on him? How is it that Vodka and Monster so far is one of the most horrendous creations he's mentioned? Perhaps it's because it's something that I could picture him consuming daily versus most of the things that he's made so far that are probably more than likely one-offs for him to consume. Okay, now that we got our delicious bacon, <coughs> now it's time to assemble this here calzone. We got our Pillsbury thin crust for our calzone. I'm gonna give it a good whack on the counter here so that way it opens up a bit. Now, here's a fun fact. He's using Pillsbury pre-made pizza dough to make his calzone, which is fine. One, I'm not going to be all hoity-toity and say you need to make your own pizza dough. If you don't have the time or energy or you just don't feel like making something from scratch, using something pre-made is totally fine. I've done it before myself. I've also made homemade handmade dough before as well. But that's not what I wanted to mention. What I wanted to bring up is the fact that there is actually a difference between calzone dough and pizza dough. That being calzone dough more frequently uses eggs and oil in it to give it that lighter, crispier texture, whereas pizza dough usually doesn't incorporate those ingredients in. Sometimes a little bit of olive oil is incorporated into pizza dough, such as like, it, it, you know, you're oiling the outside of a bowl that you're letting your dough rise in, and that obviously gets incorporated into the crust itself. But in calzone dough, it's actually worked and kneaded into the crust itself to start this delicious calzone. Okay, we got the Jif peanut butter. Yeah, I didn't want to ruin the surprise for you guys, but yep. He's bringing back the peanut butter, baby. I don't know what it is about this man and putting peanut butter in dishes it does not belong in. I will take the initiative and call every grocer in his area and tell them that this man is hereby banned from purchasing any type of peanut butter or food with peanut butter in it, just to avoid seeing things like this again. Peanut butter and bacon, okay, it's a little weird to some people maybe, but it can be incorporated into that whole sweet and savory combination kind of thing. It's kind of the rationale I talked about in the original mac and cheese video with Cobra, where he heard about the idea of the cheddar cheese and peanut butter crackers and just immediately thought, oh, well, it works for this food format, so it should translate perfectly fine to this other format, not thinking about everything else that is also going into the food and how that's going to compare to what he's basing it off of. Pay attention, YouTube, because it's going to get good. That's the oven letting us know that the preheat is done. Thank you, oven. This fork is covered in peanut butter. I want to lick it clean because I can. I'm not going to subject you to watching Cobra lick the peanut butter fork like a dog. I had to see it, and I'm not putting you guys through that. I don't hate anybody enough to make them watch this as well. And this is what our crust looks like prior to becoming a calzone. Now the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna add some brown sugar to that peanut butter. We take a nice little handful here and the top of our peanut butter. If he was putting other ingredients in it, I, you know, this looks like a fine base for a calzone. Maybe put some apple slices in there, some bananas. You, you know, you got a fun little kind of preschool snack kind of thing going on there. As we know with some of the things I listed off before we started the video, that is not the case whatsoever. That's what it looking like right there with the brown sugar and the peanut butter. Now the next step is going to be to add some bananas to it. Some bananas. I'm not so sure about the brown sugar considering he uses it basically like sprinkles, but peanut butter and bananas. Yeah, okay, sure. Now we're going to begin the process of stuffing our calzone. Take this fork and uh, some of you might say, well, wouldn't it be better to deep fry the bananas and some bacon grease? Hey, Cobra, Cobra, why does your banana have a black racing stripe down the middle of it? 
using bananas that are close to going bad in some dishes, such as banana bread, can actually be beneficial for the flavor. Using bananas that are basically already on death's door and slicing them up and using them as whole pieces is the work of the devil. Next, we're going to add some of the fun stuff to this to make it more sort of a, um, a candy calzone. Yeah. And buckle up, folks. Here we go. We got a nice big fat bag of mozzarella cheese. Okay, that's not quite how I intended. Now I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle some delicious mozzarella cheese. Take a look at this now that we've sprinkled cheese all over on top of the bananas. Yeah, buddy. The cheese by itself is bad enough, but I would at least not excuse it, but it's something that you could probably, if the other ingredients outweigh the ratio enough, you could probably look past it just a little bit. Not a lot, not enough to make it taste good whatsoever, but just enough to try and convince yourself that you're having a pleasant experience. Now we're gonna take our delicious bacon and we're gonna, that's fully cooked, and we're gonna break it up on top of the melted cheese. Oh, duh, how could I forget the bacon that he cooked up? We have the f reincarnation of Elvis over here using peanut butter, bananas, and bacon in his calzone. Now we're gonna need about maybe two or three more ingredients for this to work. Some pepperonis, some chocolate, and some more cheese. Wait, what? Did he say he was putting chocolate in this? No, no, no. This sick bastard, what the hell is he doing? You wanted a crazy ass pizza pocket, something to keep you watching, like what's he gonna do next? Oh, God. <laughs> I was recently diagnosed with positional vertigo, and so I have it come in waves every so often, even when I'm just sitting still. It has to do with the position of my head. I just had, like, one of the dizziness waves come, and I genuinely don't know if it was because of my vertigo <laughs> or because of this video. <laughs> Editing Noah here. I literally had another dizzy spell while editing this section of the video, so I'm more inclined to believe it actually was Cobra's cooking. If he just put it in the oven as is, it's weird, yes, but it's not that far off from, you know, like I mentioned with Elvis before, the whole peanut butter, bacon, banana sandwich thing. I don't know if people usually add cheese to that, and they sure as hell don't use rotten bananas, it's very, very close to pushing the line of not being okay. It's like, how do I want to describe it? It's like the racist, homophobic, everything phobic uncle that shows up at Thanksgiving. You know he doesn't belong there. You know that nobody wants him there. At the same time, though, there's still that little factor of him being a family member that keeps you from fully dismissing him. That's what this dish is. This dish is your racist uncle at Thanksgiving. We're going to add some chocolate to that so that it counterbalances with the peanut butter. Intricately place these frozen chocolates. This is looking quite nice, YouTube. Yep, that's right. Not only did he bring back the peanut butter, he's bringing back the cordial cherries, too. Mm. <laughs> I'm starting to think this man only likes very specific ingredients that we know of. As we go through these videos, we are compiling a list of ingredients that this man seems to not be able to live without. And so far, that list consists of bacon, peanut butter, and cordial cherries. One of these things is not like the other. <laughs> got a little bit of peanut butter on the side of my hand from doing that, but... No, God. Again, I watch it so you don't have to. Okay, but I will make you watch him do this, though. Just because it's cursed. That's all right. Mm. 
That's all right. That's the, the, the that's uh, yeah. Um, I don't know if I should make that joke. Uh, try to keep it at least PG thirds. Mm. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm sure you can guess where I was going by now. Looking like some crazy ass shit you'd eat at a random party, like in the middle, anyways. But there's top of that. What parties do you go to that have food that in any way resembles what you make, Cobra? The only way he could be going to parties where people make food like this is if they are a a bunch of stoners that are stoned 24 seven or be a party consisting entirely of Cobra clones. Kind of squishes down just a little bit. Just a small handful of brown sugar will do for the top of this cheese. You don't need a whole lot. Dankness is just about to be stowed upon us, YouTube. Okay, there's the center for our calzone. Let's see if we can't fold it. It's looking pretty good. I'm liking the way this is looking. I am surprised Cobra was able to fully fold up the calzone, as usually he likes to pile ingredients at least a foot high. So now I'm gonna take a sprinkle of that brown sugar. Let it caramelize on the top of our calzone. Brown sugar does not work how he thinks it does. No, but on the real note, Let's get this bitch in the oven. We didn't fully see the time that he set on the oven. He pulled away at about 11 minutes and they went by kind of fast, but I tried to count the oven beeps. It seems like we were about at 20 or so when he ended. So he's putting this thing in the oven at 420 degrees for 20 minutes. A normal pizza in a domestic oven should cook for about 10 to 15 minutes when you're preheated to around 475 degrees. With how much stuff he put into the calzone, I'm going to pull a traditional Noah and place a prediction now that there's going to be at least some element of the calzone that's not cooked all the way. I believe the top crust will be cooked all the way because it's a very thin crust and won't require a lot of time to actually cook. It could be possible that the bottom of the crust that's stuck underneath all the ingredients might not fully cook all the way through, or it could possibly be that first layer of mozzarella or even the pepperoni doesn't get that much heat in the amount of time that he's putting it in for calzone in the oven and closed it 18 minutes on the dot that's exactly why i pushed the button to 19 so that by the time i got the calzone in the oven it would be a full 18 minutes okay so he's cooking it at 18 minutes at 420 degrees we know that for sure now you can definitely see all the grease on the bottom of this i might need to use both hands for this it's legitimately kind of hard to tell how the top of the crust turned out just because you've got all this pretty much still raw brown sugar sitting on top of it. From the side profile shot, at least we can tell that the sides are cooked and browning up. Now I've gotten this calzone cut into four serving slices. I'm going to put some on a plate and we'll give this, give this crazy calzone a try. I'm going to go ahead and pick this up. I'm desperately going through my head and the ingredient list that I have in front of me, trying to figure out why it's so wet. What on earth is all that liquid? It can't just be grease from the pepperoni. Sure, the chocolate around the cordial cherries probably melted and some of the juice leaked out, but there's no way there was that much juice inside them, right? And he cooked the bacon already, so there shouldn't be that much grease left to render out of it. I'm genuinely confused as to what made it so wet. I don't know. I don't even have a hypothesis. I scrolled through the comments for like three minutes trying to figure out if anybody else had said anything about it. Nobody knows what this liquid is. Uh, the peanut butter will melt a little bit, but it shouldn't be like liquid. 
maybe it's just some grotesque bastard potion of the liquid of everything that's melted inside the calzone all seeping to the bottom. Liquid peanut butter, cordial cherry juice, bacon grease, pepperoni grease. That's the only guess I have as to what this possibly could be. Now comes the moment of truth, which is, of course, trying the disaster that we've just made. Letting it cool off a bit, I'm able to pick it up as a slice, just like that. It looks like the bottom of the dough is cooked through as well, although it's probably lost most of its crispiness because of this dumpster juice at the bottom of it. Oh, YouTube. Oh, that is just flavor town and a half. Oh. And with Cobes moaning over his creation, that's where we're going to end for today, folks. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below if you have any other King Cobra videos or any cooking videos, YouTube videos, movies, TV shows, anything that you find funny, weird, or interesting that you want me to take a look at. Shout out to all my Patreon supporters. And if you want to more directly suggest videos to me, you can sign up now for monthly polls for as little as $3 a month. And with that, thanks y'all for supporting and sticking around. And I hope to see y'all in the next one. See ya.